Welcome to the Daily Race. Man, I'm glad that you're here today. We are uh, getting the day started together. We're spending some time in God's Word, spending some time together, and then we're we're out for the day. We're, we're headed out into to whatever God has planned for us. Uh, it's Sunday morning, so uh, worship services <laughs> across our campuses, online, uh, however you're gathering today for worship. So glad that, that this is how you're kicking your day off. All right, we're, we're in Colossians chapter 2. And uh, once you're kind of wrapping up this conclusion, it seems like, or this introduction here, and uh, Paul uh, lets them know, I've been praying for you. In fact, this is what he says, I want you to know how much I've agonized for you and for the church at Laodicea and for many other believers who have never met me personally. So Paul knows that the kingdom work <laughs> is about multiplication. <clears throat> that Paul is leading people who are leading people. In fact, he says this in, in 2 Timothy 2.2. 2. He challenges Timothy to make disciples who will in turn make more disciples. Now, Paul knows that he can't single-handedly win the world to Christ. He can't go into all the world himself. He would love to. Paul loves sharing the gospel, but he knows that this is a multiplication process. So he is so excited and prays for the groups like the church here in Colossae, the church in Laodicea, where he hasn't even met them, but he has taught someone who's taught them. They're, it's the kingdom being multiplied. God's kingdom is so vast and expansive. I think sometimes we limit our view of, of how big the church is based on our experience. Um, but I've, I've had a privilege to travel not a ton of different places in the world, but a couple different pockets, and to see the vibrancy of the church, to see our brothers and sisters worshiping God, uh, the centrality of the gospel. In fact, what he prays for, we see evidence of this all around the world. Let's see what it says. He prays for them on a couple specific things. In fact, two things in particular. He says, I want them to be encouraged and knit together by strong ties of love. So he wants, he's praying for unity, unity in love, that they would be together, that this church this church that maybe started off as a house church, maybe is now a, a group of house churches. It's, it's a community. It is a fellowship. It's not just friendships. It's not just acquaintances. It's not just a group that gathers once a week and, and worships God, but they are bound in love. There's this unity. There's this oneness among them expressed in how they care for and love one another. I want them to be encouraged and knit together by the strong ties of love. And then second, I want them to have complete confidence that they understand God's mysterious plan. At first, that's how can you have complete confidence in a mysterious plan? He tells them what the plan is, which is Christ himself. In him lie all the treasure, all lie hidden all the treasures of wisdom and of knowledge. So, so he prays two things, that they would be together together, they would have a strong faith fellowship, that they would be bound by the ties of love. There would be oneness in their gathering in this body of believers and that they would understand that it's all about Christ, that in him, everything is answered. They would understand God's mysterious plan, which comes through Jesus. It isn't through the temple. It isn't through other gods and a pantheon of Greek gods that they are Roman gods that they're worshiping, it is through Christ alone. All the mystery is in him. He's praised that if these two things take place, unity and that unity is centralized on Christ because Christ loved us, we love Christ, we love each other. Then he says, I'm telling you, I'm telling you this so that no one will deceive you with well-crafted arguments. For though I am far away from you, my heart is with you. And I rejoice that you are living as you should and that your faith in Christ is strong. Uh, Paul knows that if this community of believers will focus on Christ, the centrality of Christ, and their bond of love for one another, then they'll be able to withstand all different types of, of attacks. All different types of lies are going to try to sneak in. That it'll be obvious to one another. Uh, that this is the foundation for being able to stand strong, be able to stand against spiritual battles. And if you can imagine, there's some problems coming up. There's some issues that he's going to address. And they have to do with these two things. They haven't been bound in love and they haven't 
put Christ first. They're not focusing solely on him. There have been some other teachings about Jesus plus other things. And this has caused division. This has caused all kinds of problems. So once again, laying this foundation. So what does this, this mean to us? What does this mean to us here today? Those, this, those two things are still important. The centrality of Christ. We've talked about that a little bit here in, in the previous few days. That it's about Jesus plus nothing. Christ, the Son of God, eternal God, member of the Trinity, three in one, Jesus, not created, not a created being on that Christmas morning, but has always existed. Christ died for our sins. God gave up his life for us. He suffered for our sake. If there is another message outside of that, then it is not truth. That is central. And then how we treat one another, that we are because of this, because of this strong connection to Christ, that we all come together because of him. And that means that we have to be bound in love, followers of Christ. Jesus prayed for this. I pray that they would be one, just as me and the Father are one. And not because we have everything, because we're, we're best friends with all of the other believers. And what I mean by that is not that outside of Christ we would find ourselves maybe hanging out at the same places or having the same hobbies. It's, it's much deeper than that. It's much deeper than developing friendships based on commonalities. The commonality is Christ. And because the commonality is Christ, nothing can take that away. Nothing should get in between Christian fellowship. We, we can't just break this bond. We can't just decide to not be together because Christ is what unites us. We're not, based, we're not coming together based on a football team or a hobby or a geographical area even. even. We're bound together because of Christ himself. His love sustains us and causes us to love one another as well. All right, let's 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 pause right there for today. I know we're just taking a few verses here at a time, but Paul's letters are, are so, first of all, he covers so many topics. He moves from, from point to point to point uh, that, yeah, in some sections we can read large sections and get the gist. Some, we just have to move a little bit more slowly through them, and that's what we're doing here in Colossians, and I'm having a great time doing it with you. I know I spend time in God's Word. God speak, gets a chance to speak to me pour into my life, and then it's my privilege just to be able to spend a little bit of time with you this morning after my devotions and share that with you. All right, let's go ahead and get our day started, and I encourage you, as always, share. Share the message. Share what God is speaking in your life. Share that with others. We're not meant to to keep everything to ourselves. We are multipliers, just as Paul is, is living out this example with these other churches. He's poured into people who have poured into people who have poured into others. So let's be doing that. Let's be living that out. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning and we thank you so much just for for your love for us, uh, the fact that you've saved us and rescued us, and God, for the bond that we have with each other because of you. God, when we have moments of of conflict, we have moments of division, God, help us to to look to you in that moment, not look at our differences of opinion and uh, life circumstances that, that separate us, God, but to look to you. You are what hold us in common your death, your resurrection, your love for us. Forgive us for the times that we've allowed division to sneak in because we've looked at, at, at minor things, at things that, that aren't the centrality of, of who you are. God, we also come to you this morning and just pray for, for peace. God, we, we live in a world with all, all types of conflict, all types of, of, um, of un, unnecessary death and, and, and horrors. And God, this morning as we just look what's happening in Israel and that's been going on in the Middle East. God, we, we pray for peace there. We know that there's, your word talks about conflict in that region. God, there's always been tension. Um, but God, we just pray for the innocent. God, we pray for the, the women and the children and so many that are in harm's way. God, we pray that you would um, step in. God, we, we, we know that you see all of it. Uh, God, that you have a special place uh, in your heart for, for Israel and, and your chosen people that you've chosen to, to use to bring through the Messiah and bless the whole world through. So God, we, we pray for them. We, we pray for safety, we pray for security, but God, we also pray that they would come to know you as your personal savior, everyone in that conflict. God, we know so much religion, so much uh, talk of, of you and praying to you happens in, in the Middle East, but without this personal centrality of Christ that we spoke, spoke about here today, Jesus plus nothing, God, we pray that you would reveal your son to them. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. 
All right. Well, hey, I hope you have a great, great rest of the day. I look forward to seeing you 24 hours from now right back here on The Daily Race. Love you guys.